Hi, I'm Christina and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. So this week I'm reading The Asera Murders by Riku Onda and this is a Japanese book and it was published in Japan 15 years ago and then last year it was translated into English. Now I've said this year I want to read more translated works and this is going to be the first book I read that's been translated from Japanese so I'm very much looking forward to reading this one. So this is a mystery and I think the premise of it sounds so, so intriguing. So in the 1970s, at a party, 17 people die of cyanide poisoning and the only member of the family who survives is their blind daughter. So I just think it sounds so, so, so good. So I have read 90 pages of this so far and I'm really, really liking it. So there has been a book published about the murders and the person who has written the book is a PhD student and she's writing her thesis on the tragedy and then it gets published into the book and it becomes a very, very popular book. Now, she was actually in attendance at the party that day when she was a child. So she is a neighbour of the Asoa family and she has two brothers and one of her brothers was at the party most of the day. He was going back and forth between their house and, you know, the party's house. And she is actually kind of friendly with the blind daughter, the only one who survives. So she has this kind of in, this kind of connection with the family, with the event, with everybody who lives in the area. So lots of people talk to her and give interviews about on the events that happened that day. And it kind of makes it a very kind of personal look at the tragedy so that's why she's really well placed to do lots of interviews about that day because most of the adults remember her as a child so they're very willing to talk to her and i think they probably tell her a lot more than they might have told somebody else so that's really interesting so the very first perspective we get is from her the author and she's talking to you as the reader one-on-one -on -one. so you have this very personal feel and i really really like that so in this 90 page chunk, we're also introduced to two more perspectives, one of which is her assistant. So when she was at university writing this thesis, she hired someone to help her and he was mainly involved in doing a lot of the transcribing. So obviously they've done lots of lots of interviews. They've done hours and hours worth of interviews. So someone has to sit down and transcribe all of those out. And that is a very time consuming job because I did English language at uni I've actually had experience of like listening to interviews and then transcribing them and it really is a big task it's really good fun I really enjoyed it but it's kind of nice to see that kind of aspect of it so yeah the second perspective we get is from her assistant and he has a very kind of interesting take on it too because he was at university with her and I think he was a year below her and he kind of had a little bit of a crush on her he, he liked her quite a bit so he has some interesting opinions on her which maybe taints how he thinks about her and how he thinks about the events and then the next perspective we get is the housekeeper's daughter so obviously this family who's um, died, the Asoa family, are a very wealthy family. They're a family of doctors. They're a very kind of high social standing family. And they have a housekeeper and she was obviously at the party that day. And she in fact did take some of the poison, but I think she didn't die. I think she was the only person who drank the poison who didn't die. So obviously she was a very, very interesting character at the time because she was actually there and she was poisoned, but she did live. And that was a very kind of interesting take on it. So to hear her daughter's perspective, because obviously it's 30 years later, this woman has since died. So we're hearing from her daughter's point of view. And I'm really liking the way the book is kind of putting little, 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 <laughs> I can't even speak, little bits of different information in front of you. So obviously it's a mystery and the way that we hear first from the author and she's kind of 
talking to you one-on-one -on -one, and then we hear from her assistant and then we get a whole new different perspective and then you get the excerpt from the book which is also it's really well written and obviously you get this whole new kind of slant on it because that's essentially fiction she never says if it's going to be fiction or non-fiction and she just kind of wants to write what she wants to write she doesn't necessarily say who the murderer is if the murderer is who the murderer is if that makes sense and then yeah to hear the next perspective of the housekeeper's daughter is another interesting one so i am really looking forward to carry on reading this book I, so far I'm thinking this is going to be definitely a four or a five star read because I'm just so intrigued and it's written so well. It's just very, very readable. I read those 90 pages in like two different sections. I think I read about 40, 50 pages each time and I didn't want to put it down but because I was reading it on my lunch break I had to, <laughs> I had to obviously put it down. So yeah, I'm going to read a bigger chunk now and then I'll let you know what I think. Hi, so I've read another chunk of this book. I've read about 100 pages, so I'm now just over halfway through and I'm still really, really enjoying it. So we've been introduced to three more perspectives, one of which is the lead detective on the case. And I really like his perspective. He's a really, really interesting character. And I do think that she's really, really good at kind of distinguishing between the different voices. You can definitely tell that different people are talking in each of the sections. And I also like the way she's written it in the sense that um, these people are kind of answering questions to someone. So you can tell they're talking to someone. They'll like say, oh, I'm going to have another drink. Would you like one? Oh, and then this happened. So someone's interviewing them, which I think is really interesting. So I have some theories like it could be that the killer's interviewing them or I don't know who's interviewing them. Um, that's kind of left a mystery. So I have lots of ideas and I'm really interested to see who that will be. And then the next perspective that we see is the author's elder brother. So he was also one of the neighboring children. He was obviously slightly older. He actually was the one that went onto the scene with his brother and sister and they saw the horrible, horrible things that were happening. Obviously all of these people dying of cyanide and people were incredibly unwell and a lot of pain. And um, I think you vomit a lot, you get really, really poorly, and then obviously you die. So he's the one that came across this scene and he was the one who actually first raised the alarm. So he was the one that saw what was happening and then just ran out to the nearest police box and rang and said, you know, what was happening. So he's basically the first like responder on this. He's the one that raises the alarm. So it was very interesting to hear about him. And then we have a lot more kind of interesting facts about the author. So obviously he's her brother and he grew up with her and he gives you lots of little anecdotes of who she is as a person. And then we start to realize that she's actually a very complicated woman, a very, very interesting character. And we hear so much about her and you're like, oh, she's, she's definitely a very interesting character. I don't want to say anything that's spoilers. But you're reading it and you hear these little anecdotes that he says and you're like that was that was weird that was disturbing and then previously the other person who had an actual opinion on our author was her assistant and he obviously had like very differing opinions some that kind of overlapped with the brothers some that were quite different so that was really really good then there's another perspective and this is another interesting one and it isn't a spoiler because it says on the back but at the time of the tragedy someone is considered a prime suspect but then this person later commits suicide so there's no kind of redemption arc here. However, lots of people don't think that this person was necessarily responsible for the murders or maybe there was other people involved in the murders. So this perspective is a child who was friendly with the man who is the prime suspect who ended up committing suicide. And he was a man who'd had a lot of tragedy in his life and he was finding religion, he was finding Buddhism and he didn't really get on very well with adults. He just 
didn't really click with other adults but he got on really well with children and so he has some kind of friends that he knows that are children and um, so we kind of hear the perspective of this man but obviously at the time he was a child so it's through a child's eyes and now you're seeing obviously he's an actual adult now he's a proper man and he's telling you then saying like but now i'm thinking on it as an adult then perhaps you know this so it's really really interesting i really really like the way we're hearing so many different perspectives so you're kind of drawing all of these pieces together all of these clues together and it's it's really really good i'm still really enjoying it and unfortunately i won't be able to read any more of this today but i will probably read that in maybe one or two sittings so yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to carrying on with this book. I would definitely read more by this author if they've been translated into English, of course. And I'm thinking it's, it's really, really good. It's a really excellent mystery. And I'm just definitely going to be reading more Japanese fiction if it's anything to go by because I'm really, really liking it. Hi, so I have finished this book. I read the final chunk in one day and I really, really liked it. Now, I will say that this was on course to be a five star read for me, but the ending just let it down a little bit. It was a little bit too vague for me. I just wanted a little bit more. Nevertheless, really, really enjoyed it. It is a definite four star read for me and I would definitely recommend it. It was an excellent mystery and I think the way in which she writes her characters, they have such distinct voices, that was really, really wonderful. And I thought all of the inclusion of the Japanese culture was great and just overall a really well written book, really, really enjoyed my time with this one. I thought it was absolutely wonderful. So this was my first foray into Japanese literature and I definitely want to read more now. So if you have any recommendations for books that have been translated from Japanese, please do leave those down in the comments for me to check out. So as this one was a mystery, I'm planning to read a different genre next week and I think I'm going to read a horror and that will be my first horror of 2021. So that's quite exciting. So thank you so much for watching. Please do like the video if you liked it and please do subscribe if you'd like to see more of me talking about books. And please let me know what you've been reading recently. And if you wanna leave a comment but you don't know what to write, leave me a little flower. So I will see you in my next video. Bye.